Welcome to episode two of our LSC30 swap guide. In this video, we're gonna be covering our engine, transmission, drive shaft, differential, axle, and header options. Let's do it. When it comes to picking an engine for your A30, it's really whatever you want within the LS family. Whether it's LS1, LS2, LS3, LS6, or any of the Vortec iterations, they're all gonna fit just fine after the required modifications. The only LS you're gonna have problems fitting into an E30 is the LS7 because of its dry sump system. But if you wanna be making LS7 power, you might just be better to put a little bit of money into one of the other LS blocks that we mentioned. Now in this series, we're not gonna go into how to make more power with an LS because that is not E30 specific. So we're just gonna keep moving along. For your transmission, your best bet is a F-Body T56 because it fits so well, the shifter pops up in the stock location, and it can certainly handle all the power that you want to throw at it. Now, if you're having troubles finding a T56, you can also use a CD009 out of a 350 or 370Z. These guys are typically a bit lower purchase price, but you do need to buy an adapter plate for them to bolt it to the LS block. For your drive shaft, Siki offers a pre-made unit that is made for this exact swap for $650, but you can also just get one made locally. That's what I did and it costed me $550. Boom, $100 savings right there. For the rear end, reusing the factory E30 diff is actually a very common option. They can handle a pretty decent amount of power. Now in my E30, I'm running 400 wheel horsepower and the diff so far has held up great. I would recommend using Garagistic's secondary diff brace to add a second mounting ear to the diff so that it doesn't flex as much with all that added torque. Now, if you were planning to make a lot of power or to be really, really hard on the car, then I would recommend putting in a Ford 8.8. Although, unfortunately, there are no mounting kits for it, so it would be completely up to you to figure out how to get that in the car with a set of axles. If you choose to stick with the E30 diff, then the drive shaft shop offers heavy duty axles that are rated for 700 horsepower, although they are kind of pricey. On my E30, I'm still on the factory axles and they haven't blown up on me yet. Although the plan is once I get a little bit of extra cash, I wouldn't mind swapping to those heavy duty axles just for peace of mind. <laughs> uh, extra cash. For your header options, you don't have a lot of options. It depends whether you want to have a good affordable LS swap or if you want to be squeezing all the power you possibly can out of that V8. So the affordable option is Sanderson headers. They may not look the best or flow the best, but they will get your car on the road and hey, that's a good start. Now CX Racing also offers some LS E30 swap headers, although I couldn't find any reviews on them and I was just kind of worried that they might crack. Now the only real good option is the LSE30 swap headers made by Siki. They are inch and seven eighths primaries and I can vouch for them. They are really high quality, but they do come in at $1,200. Now to run those guys on your car, you also need to use solid offset control line bushings and you need to remove that steering reg joint using a solid steering conversion kit. All right, now that we've covered all of your options for engine and drivetrain, it's time to move on to episode three, where we'll cover how to mount this thing in the car, as well as figuring out your fuel and cooling systems. I'll see you there.